Welcome, Welcome to another know. episode of I Don't Know What the Fuck I'm Doing podcast. Podcast. Today we are talking about relationships, but Ooh. through friendships. Ah. Yeah. Something that we didn't have to spend 20 minutes working up towards. <laughs> no. We're just gonna go by the seat of our pants yeah. and see where it takes us. The seat of our nonsensical pants. The malarkey pants? The malarkus. Malarkeus pants. If y'all were here for the conversation beforehand, you can find that in our Patreon, most likely. <laughs> uh, we have some weird conversations before we actually have the weird conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and today, I feel, is a conversation that isn't talked about a lot, but is felt. And okay. that is friendships. In your pool of friends, do you go wide, meaning you have a load, or do you go narrow, meaning you have fewer? And I think this kind of corresponds with introvert and extrovert. Okay. But I also think it can not. Um, I just think it's just like based on a person to person thing. Okay. Because I used to be very wide in my friendships. And now, mm. especially over 2020, I'm incredibly narrow. Mm. Like, I think it's you. I made the cut. <laughs> Like my sister. <laughs> like, that's about <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> like just David. Um, no, there's a few other people there, but I don't really hang out with them as much because I'm not doing a podcast with them. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I feel like it's weird. I, I guess you could say I was extroverted in a way. Mm -hmm. And I had so many pools of friends, but I knew people that were like, I don't want lots of friends. I just want few friends and them to be deep friendships. Right. And I get that. But I think you can have that on a wide scale, too. So I just wanted okay. to talk about friendships and how to really identify what works best for you. I think it's a really good topic because especially as I've gotten older, my friendship pool has dramatically changed. And actually, especially post-college, right? So in college, there's just people everywhere. It's really easy in high school. It's really easy and organic to find people that you connect with, people that have things in common and friendships and acquaintances naturally occur. Mm. After college, it's all work. And then all those friends kind of start to dwindle off because they get married, they have kids, mm. they have uh, divorces or other life changes. And then the reach outs become fewer and far between. And so now that we're quite further from that, the the dynamic definitely not changes. terribly far not far enough <laughs> far enough yeah <laughs> just far enough um so yeah it's definitely changed for me but getting into like the entrepreneurial world has sh made a a different shift as well because then there's a lot of people like coaches and communities to dive back into but those aren't necessarily friendships and they're not necessarily even acquaintances. It's a different relationship yeah. too, right? Mm. So tell us kind of about your journey from, yeah, going from kind of college to working for yourself to your business to now. Because I bet those are very different. The friendships. Yeah. Friendship circles that you've well, kept around you. The overall arching theme with any of these phases mm -hmm. is I tend to be the organizer. Okay. And when I'm not organizing, it tends to, and I don't mean this in an egotistical way, people literally tell me this, mm -hmm. like, because you were no longer organizing, or you moved, or this and that, but I was still in contact, mm -hmm. everything fell apart, like, we just weren't hanging out anymore, we weren't doing this, we weren't doing that, it was like, somehow I was, like, the center of making sure things happened, Right. and uh, that happened with college, I would text people and be like, hey, going to lunch, if you guys want to hang out, and so, like, 20 of us would be there, okay. you know, or five, mm -hmm. and then, um, after college, I got married, and so I was incredibly isolated in that world. Okay. Because I was, you know, married to a Marine. We were in a very horrible area in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And, uh, but when I came back, I started organizing things again. <laughs> and they were like, we're so glad you're here because <laughs> now we get together. <laughs> All your friends are like, we've done nothing for the last however many years. Like two to three years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a joke. So We've it's just, just been like, staring at our phone, waiting for you to put this together. Right. It's so funny. It's like, okay. Um, but yeah. then I kind of got tired of being that person. Yeah. You know, I got tired of always having to be the initiator. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say my friends were not invested in me. It just, that's just not how they're programmed. Right. And I got really tired of doing that. 
Okay. And so I moved again and uh, became even more isolated by being an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. But again, I would meet with lots of people and we would all get together for like a mastermind, like rogue women or whatever it is. And again, I was always the coordinator. Right. So for me, I feel like, yes, it was, it has always been a wide friendship circle. Okay. But I'm getting very tired of that because mm -hmm. I'm always having to organizing it. Okay. And because um, I guess people don't pull their weight, I guess you could put it that way. Okay. Or want to pull their way um, to keep things going in that social atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I've become very, very narrow. And 2020 really helped me narrow even further. Okay. Narrow it to zero. <laughs> to like two people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I'm actually totally okay with that. Mm -hmm. But I also feel that there is a there is this time now in 2021 where I'm going to start entering into more social aspects. Mm -hmm. Because being so narrow... Mm -hmm. I don't like being around people. Okay. I am like, I am fine being a hermit and being an introvert now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just like, I never want to leave my house. Yeah. Like and... I was even pushing David. I was like, we should do Zoom calls for this <laughs> podcast. He's like, no. <laughs> they're just so much less interactive and there's so much less. The energy isn't there. Yeah. I think. Uh, but it's also, we talked about in one of our earlier episodes, that's your kind of um, default trauma to go to is where you... Um, tend to go into isolation mm. instead of uh, healthy connection. Because I've always been around people. Yeah. Um, so that's one part of it. Now I'm not never around people because of 2020. Yeah. And I think it's great. <laughs> 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 when I moved up to the mountains, it was that way. Yeah. And that was great. And then I moved back to Denver in 2020. Therefore, mm -hmm. it's great. So, okay. you know, it's, I feel like I'm just recouping from... Probably about ten years of not only one distractions, which we which we've talked about and covered lots, yeah, but also just to chill on being the organizer, yeah. Let somebody else do that, and let me just be over here and have fun with people. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that though. That like you're kind of that was your natural go to was being the organizer. Uh, mine was actually the exact. Well, actually, so I've had a very similar uh, path actually. I was going to say it was the exact opposite, but that's not true at all. <laughs> it's in denial. Yeah. It's like the reluctant organizer. <laughs> and it is a reluctant organizer, right? Because it's there's things that I want to do or there's communities I want to be a part of. And I can't, I don't find that community. So I'll start something, I'll lob it out there, like in college. Mm. Um, and this was back forever ago before like mixed martial arts and UFC was a big thing. Like no one knew what it was, but I wanted to get into mixed martial arts and ultimate fighting. No one taught it, right? So I was like, well, I'm just going to start an MMA club because there's a few of us that seem to know about it. And it ended up turning into this big thing. Right. Um, after college, uh, I think I didn't organize a lot of stuff after that. But I joined, um, like I mentioned, the parkour, the acro yoga, those kind of things. Um, but I was working full-time in retail, right? So what I did, and then I got very narrow. Because I'm naturally an introvert. I don't normally go out. I hate being parts of other people's groups, mm. generally, unless there's like, unless it's a sports-related thing or a fitness-related thing, because I'm super awkward. Like, I'm introverted, I'm weird, and I'm like, back then I was super self-conscious about it. Mm. Now I'm like, I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a new cool. It is the yeah. new cool, right? Oh. So I've definitely owned it, and I just like being me. Um, but back then it was really insecure because I had these weird hobbies. I had these weird goals and dreams. Um, so I just started uh, putting my own groups together. So I started a wine club because mm. it was like, okay, I want to learn wine. Uh, how can I get some people to do this with me? So I started a little meetup group that turned into a super cool wine group, right? Um, I wanted to run my own company because I wanted to get out of retail and I couldn't, I didn't really know how to do it and I couldn't find the right community. So I started a small mastermind group just to get some like-minded people around me. Mm. And it really grew very quickly. Um, and I think people need an organizer, right? And so what I say is I'm not like the leader, I'm not the coach, I'm not the yeah. um, expert on anything. So I just wanted people to hang out and I wanted to create an environment for people to come join me. Mm -hmm. And I think 
a lot of people desperately need that structure. They need someone to say, hey, it's this date at this time, this is what we're doing so that they'll just go. And for some reason, a lot of people just won't do that. Yeah. That simple stuff. Why? I don't know. If you know why, put it in the comments because <laughs> I really want to know why. Yeah. Like, I, I guess it was because I was raised by a mother that was just get it done. Mm-hmm. Like, get it done. Don't care how, don't care who, just get it done. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's kind of how I was. I was like, no one seems to be getting together for lunch. Okay, get it done. You know? Yeah. And, but that becomes problematic in friendships mm-hmm. because you're always the initiator. Mm-hmm. And even if you ask for some help and for some support, not everyone's ready to do that or wanting right. to do that. Yeah. And so it's also, for me, on my perspective, I always kind of was like, well, is this friendship valuable to me? Mm-hmm. Because it's like you're not, not when I want to say pull your weight, but you're not engaging yourself into it. Not being an active you're participant. You're just benefiting and yeah. taking, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Rather than providing and creating. Okay. So that's something I always felt, and that's kind of where I guess the burnout comes from. Because you're just like, I'm really tired of doing that for my actual friends and not just like business groups. Right. And it's like, and so I mean, even then, business groups, like they can be your friends, but then they all of a sudden go missing when you need some help, you know? Yeah. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I think 2020 brought a lot of clarity to that to me. Okay. Business and friend wise, I was just like, you know, one or two people. Yeah. Because I'm tired of having to organize and get everyone on the same page. Okay. For me, actually, what happened was I, because uh, I had a cattle ranch mm-hmm. um, back in whatever year. <laughs> and it wasn't even that far. It was in, and this is like shortly after college, mm-hmm. right? It wasn't that far after college. I still had a good group of friends and we would all kind of hang out um, when I lived in Denver. Mm-hmm. I moved out to Castle Rock and kind of the far side of Castle Rock. But it's not Kremlin. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it's not, not terribly the isolated. other side of the state or right. some other state. It's like a 45 minute drive. Mm-hmm. It was a... Like, we had a beautiful house, we had all this open space, we had everything you could possibly want to do. And I'd be like, hey, friends, you should come hang out at the ca- at the ranch, and we can shoot guns or chase chickens or whatever mm-hmm. you want to do. And nobody came. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I totally feel that. Mind-blowing to me. Mm-hmm. And that really showed me, like, if they can't take an hour, you know, or, like, a day to come visit me at, like, the coolest place ever... Are they my friends? Exactly. Gets you to really question that stuff. So those of you who are listening, who can relate to us, great. For those of you who are listening, they go, oh, yeah, I'm the person that doesn't drive for 45 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Might want to think about what your friend is also thinking about you in this situation. Because Mm -hmm. it is incredibly disappointing when you're like, for me, you know, I had a cabin. And so it was like, you know, it was awesome. Every time someone comes, they love it. Yeah. But getting them there Mm -hmm. is so fucking stupid. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Like you were pretty easy. And so another friend was pretty easy. But everybody else who has ever been there, it Mm. was like a tug and pull. And so I finally was just like, if you come, you come. If you don't, I know. Right. Yeah. And "Mm." it's because I could relate to that. I was like, wow, she's inviting me to this super cool thing. Which is like two hours away. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. You know? And it just, the uh, um, that's a huge invitation, mm-hmm. right? This is my personal space. It's my family spot. Uh, it's not like an open invitation to everyone. Not everyone's allowed to come. Yeah. yeah exactly. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder actually, now I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this is coming back to kind of like those seven love languages of quality time. Because I'm a quality time person. Accurate. Okay. So it may be part of that. Mm -hmm. But also, (laughs) if you're aware or even have any sense of what the seven love languages are, Mm -hmm. and you know quality time is one of them, Mm -hmm. you might want to consider that 45-minute drive. Okay. So I'll take... That's actually a really good um, example because a lot of people don't see it as... Don't see it as that. Mm -hmm. Because we're all stuck in our own world, right? Oh, yeah. There's plenty of things I've canceled. Especially as an introvert. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually made a post about it last year where it's like, I'm like getting ready for a holiday party and I'm crying because I'm like introverted and I don't want to <laughs> go to it. But I have to go so that my friends know that I don't hate them because <laughs> like if I don't show up, they'll think that I hate them. Right. 
So it's like some I'll have to force myself into these situations mm -hmm. um, for them. <laughs> And cry as I do it. Yeah. But other people don't really think about it that way. They're just like, oh, they're my friend. They'll understand. They've got this stuff going on because my husband's got this and my kid's got a bloody nose or they're sick or whatever. Because right. yeah. um, life does get in the way. And taking two days out to go drive to the middle of nowhere, whether it's 45 minutes away, middle of nowhere, yeah. <laughs> or a couple hours away, uh -huh. middle of nowhere, which is still not that far. Not um, all that. It's that same pain point that they have to overcome to go get there. I guess. Yeah. Even when they have two months notice. Sorry, I got a little bitterness going on here. No, I get it. Trust me. Uh, right? Yeah. But it's just really interesting that um, even by narrowing mm -hmm. from, you know, people I felt like weren't really showing up in the friendship, mm -hmm. I guess you could say, or doing a lot of asking but not actually doing a lot of giving. Um, business or friendship. I've really narrowed down to people I truly know, like, and trust, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. And half of these people don't even live in the state. <laughs> yeah. They live across the world. They live in Florida. Like, they're all over. Yeah. And um, I'm finding that those are the people I want to spend time with. Mm -hmm. and, and for a quality time person, that's a big deal. Yeah. So I'm like, I am totally open to fly to Tampa and hang out with Jeremy, who we interview, who you're probably going to see here in a couple of weeks. And I'm totally cool with yeah. flying out to New York to visit with a couple of people, and maybe, maybe even Tayo, mm -hmm. who we also interviewed, which you'll see in a couple of weeks. <laughs> 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 but there's people around the world, like in Israel and, and so on, that I'm literally like open to going to visit them mm -hmm. because they're hundreds of thousands of miles away or whatever, mm -hmm. and they are engaging with me. And right. they're being good friends in business and as a personal friend. Yeah. And so it's like, why wouldn't I invest time to come and see you? Yeah, I agree. And so I just kind of, I kind of feel like, again, this may come with age, mm -hmm. but it's that I'm totally open and narrowing. Mm -hmm. And if it's like two or three people, I'm kind of going, yeah, that's fine. Is that so, a problem? Am I going into trauma mode and being like, I don't want to see anyone in the whole world? Maybe a little bit, yeah. but I mean, that's not abnormal. <laughs> right. I'm doing it myself. <laughs> I, think we all, I think we all do it. Yeah. Um, but it really is there there's two sides to it, right? Because we are all busy, especially mm -hmm. as we're getting older. Um, we even talked about it in our last episode, uh, about like how do you find time for working out for myself? Like if I'm so busy I can't even take care of myself health wise, right. then how do you take that time to spend time with people that you care about? Right? Mm -hmm. And especially, I think we talked about it with dating on the last one. Like, then how do you find a time to date and friends right. and family and health and all this? And it stacks up. So that's where um, relationships definitely tend to separate. Uh, and for people where quality time is your love language, it's especially hard. Yeah. Yeah. So you might consider, maybe it's not just personal that they are just kind of busy. It's so personal. <laughs> so personal. They're out to get me. <laughs> they're uh, not out to get you, but you're kidding. you're feeling neglected. So yeah. it's like, if they're going to ne neclect me, I'm going to neglect them. Mm -hmm. Which isn't wrong, but it also doesn't lead towards connection. Well, I think this also comes down to the time factor, right? Mm -hmm. Really knowing how to utilize your time well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the organizers come in. The people who are scheduling things to do. Ugh then we can put this thing on our calendar because someone scheduled the thing to do. Instead of, hey, let's hang out sometime somewhere. Mm. Um, then it's like, hey, let's hang out this time, this time, and do this. Right. Thing. Yeah. So there is value in being the organizer, but it does get frustrating sometimes. You get a lot of burnout. Yeah. For sure. And I'll say when I first started it, because I wasn't planning on being an organizer at all, uh, I would <laughs> organize the event and then just hope someone else was going to take charge. Because <laughs> no. I'm not the head. I don't want to talk in front of people, mm. right? I was like, well, I'm not the wine expert, right? So wine club, for example. I organized the wine club. And I was like, cool. Who's going to talk about wine? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like. You? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't know anything. <laughs> right. So I'm reading like the back of the bottle before wine night. And then I tell everyone about whatever the back of the bottle says. <laughs> and they're like, you know a lot about you know wine, a lot David. About wine. 
That's right. Sure do. That's funny. Yeah, it was the same for me with uh, when I had a mastermind of my own um, because I was looking for connection with women Mm -hmm. in business. And I didn't want it to be like a typical networking group. Yeah. I wanted it to be a fun, awesome mastermind. And Mm -hmm. it was more intimate per se because we only had about 10 or less at a time. Yeah. Um, and I did this with a, a friend of mine together because she had the idea of doing a women's mastermind. And I was like, oh, that'd be great. Let's do it together. And we had the conversation. I was like, I'm not doing this forever. Mm-hmm. Like day one, I am not doing this forever. I will help you facilitate this, but you're taking over and I'm off to do other things. Okay. And um, in the end, she didn't. <laughs> and that's fine. But it was just like, um, even it's so interesting to me how people are easily able to say yes to a commitment and not follow through. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I don't blame her for that. I don't blame anyone for it, but I'm also like, cause I've done it too, mm-hmm. but it's so interesting how we say yes so quickly, mm-hmm. but we don't follow through on it because life or dot, dot, dot. Uh, fear or fear. Right. Okay. Cause this mastermind, she could have really taken her off with it if she really wanted to. And she knows that. Mm-hmm. Um, but she decided not to because she wanted to have a social life and she wanted to continue working her job, which she gets paid great money for, mm-hmm. um, instead of running a business where she could risk not having a great social life. Right. You know, that's her priority. Yeah. But it was just interesting to find that you say yes to something and then pull out because you're risking Whatever. your social life. Yeah. So that was just interesting to me. In Colorado Mastermind, I've gone, I went through about probably five different partners that I was like ready to let them take it and run with it wow. because I wanted to go do something else, but I wanted this group to work. Every single one of them just disappeared. Right. Because once that pressure started to show up and it's like, okay, here's the responsibility. Here's what you got to do. Um, it was too much. They weren't ready for it. She's, it's interesting because it is one of the easiest things to do is to facilitate mm-hmm. something. It takes yeah. a little bit of time, mm-hmm. but it takes <laughs> rather simple to do. Structure, accountability, it takes organization. I guess um, is that just not natural in people? It's it is a lot of pressure. I think probably if I hadn't have started the way that I started, I pro- I don't think I could do it. Mm. Honestly. Mm. But because I started is like, I didn't start like, hey, I want to run this 2,000 person mastermind group. I was like, I want like five people to talk to. (laughs) (laughs) People praying. (laughs) Yeah. And then it just, people had started joining and it started growing. Um, The structure of it changed. And then I was able to bring in experts and guests and have all this. Right. um, But I think just as a newer business owner, it can be intimidating. Mm. Maybe that's where it's at. Just as probably going two hours to spend a weekend in the cabin could be intimidating. Right. You know? I've literally driven five hours to Uray to go for a two-day or a night and a morning wedding. Mm-hmm. Like, because my friend who was in college was mm-hmm. getting married and I hadn't really talked to in like three years. Yeah. You know? And so I just have to keep reminding myself that people are not me, right? Yeah. But also they have different priorities in terms of how they engage in a friendship. Right. Like, so the flip side I was going to say of that is probably my best friend is, um, he, we talk like once a year, maybe, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but I would still say we're best friends and we've been friends since sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And it's like, every time we talk, we pick up exactly where we left off. Not, there's no hurt. There's no bitterness because we're just like, Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. It has been like a year, I guess, since I've talked to him. Right. I'd probably call him. I work the same place. <laughs> I talked to you like five years ago, and I'm just like, "Hey, how's it going?" Like nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and they're always confused. <laughs> right. But yeah, I get it. So there's a trade-off there. See, I'm lucky because my ultimate best friend is my sister. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty easy. She's kind of she can't escape. <laughs> <laughs> She's there. <laughs> We've locked you in. <laughs> yes. Well, she was my best friend before she became my sister as well. She's adopted. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah, yeah there's no escape <laughs> and you said she's coming back to colorado right she is yeah. and she's probably going to move in with me for mm-hmm. a while until she gets a, a job and a place to stay as well so that's mm-hmm. exciting that's good so help. i will have a dog babysitter basically which would be nice <laughs> um so like how that's the first thing you just go to <laughs> she knows <laughs> and she doesn't she does now <laughs> you're not like i'm gonna have like a bestie roomie 
I'm going to have the dog babysitter so well, I can that. dip out. I mean, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can dip out. Okay. No. Um, no, it would be good to have some life in the house outside of me and my dog. Yeah. Great. But, um, yeah, she is my best friend. And, you know, I think that's also interesting how my best friends are also part of my family. <laughs> yeah. Which is so interesting. Um, so bringing it back to wide versus narrow, uh, I wanted to cover, I think there, it's a very important cycle that needs to happen. I don't think it's just kind of one, one, either or, mm -hmm. because as we grow and as we change, our interests change, our our values change. Um, so I think having width to find more people that can be your friends mm -hmm. is very important. What do you think about that? I think that's actually a great point because even if, like, per se, you have a business and you move to a different city, mm -hmm. you're going to begin networking wide. Mm -hmm. to then network more narrow and have those close business relationships. And I think that makes a good sense, actually. Yeah. Hmm. So then you can like, kind of narrow it down, find people. But then I think it's also good to go back out and expand. Yeah. And put There's yourself out there. Find some groups. Find some communities. You make a great point. Thank you. I do that sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Every so yeah. often. Yeah. Uh, it's actually my probably my greatest fear of leaving Colorado. Mm. One of the reasons probably I have not moved out of Colorado is because my community is here. Mm. I know everyone here. Mm. Not everyone here, but it's like I'm comfortable here. It's right? more like everyone knows you. <laughs> everyone knows me. <laughs> I'm not that important. <laughs> but it is much easier because it's like Colorado native. I've been here. I know yeah. the energy. If I went somewhere else, like knowing absolutely nobody, having like no contacts, no ties, that's scary to me, mm. honestly. Mm. I had a similar feeling in uh, 2019. I actually flew to Florida, Tampa, mm -hmm. to visit a couple of friends, including Jeremy, and um, a good friend, Lori. And I was, like, actually playing with the idea of moving to Tampa mm -hmm. or moving somewhere into Florida. Okay. I, ha I just have this feeling I need to be at the, the ocean, obviously. Yeah. And so Florida was going to be a great option for me. It was cost-effective, big business area, especially in Tampa. Okay. Um, and I already knew a couple people over there, not mm -hmm. a lot, but a few that were going to be really great. And uh, so I flew over there and I was actually, when I was there, I was actually more excited for the fact that I didn't know anyone there, really, mm -hmm. compared to Colorado. Because, but I mean, it felt like for a while there, I'd walk into an event or I would speak in an event mm -hmm. and half the people knew me right. and I didn't know them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. Hi, you know, whether it yeah. was I was Skyping into a boot camp or I was on stage or they just see me on social media or whatever it is. Yeah. My name was getting around. Right. And, and my face, I guess. And it's because they recognize me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it got to the point where I knew so many or I knew of so many people and a lot of people knew me, mm -hmm. but I still wasn't getting anywhere. Right. And so the prospect of going to Tampa actually really excited me mm -hmm. because not a lot of people knew my name. Okay. But I also had, I guess you could say, a savviness in education and understanding mm -hmm. of how to network better. Yeah. So I feel like moving to a new city sometimes is good mm -hmm. because it gets you to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Also, you know how to network to a higher level than you did before. Yeah. Accurate. And so I feel like you could get places that you want to be faster than ever right and then that's yeah. true even if you stay in say colorado but mm -hmm. i when i went to florida that's just the feeling i had it was like yeah i'd go wide but i would be able to identify who my narrow mm -hmm. place would be faster yeah it's on my list of things to do but it is actually a very strong uh out of my comfort zone oh yeah interesting so. i guess you gotta do it then exactly yeah. <laughs> so i mean it is my goal is to be traveling yeah. um all 2021 as soon as it's not super crazy right starting with mexico starting with mexico i think it's a it's a pretty straightforward topic but i think it does resonate with everyone so I think yeah it's cool but it's also one of those things that a lot of people feel like they have to continue to be broad and right. because it's like a people pleasing thing right mm -hmm. i have to be loved so everybody i know needs to be taken care of and therefore mm -hmm. you never take care of yourself or you give too much to the takers yeah and you don't actually reciprocate that love back yeah and that so i i want to talk lob a third category out there right so there's friends lob just, just like that lob it out yeah <laughs> lob. 
time. <laughs> Uh, and this is a neat one, especially in the, the entrepreneurial world, oh. is friends, acquaintances, but colleagues. And what's neat is that, like, in all these networking, all these kind of things, a lot of these are colleagues, and they're never going to be clients. Yeah. They're never going to be um, customers of ours. They may never be friends or acquaintances, but they are people to bounce business ideas off, yeah. interact with the network. There's a type with. of friendship in that, but yeah. Yeah, but I think it it it's a very different dynamic. Oh, absolutely. And it's a new one that uh, I didn't really expect to have it be so different, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like I felt like I had a lot of friends, but really I had a lot of colleagues. Yeah. So For a long time. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, where is everybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah, again, I think it's that stop being so afraid to go narrow. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be narrow. Yeah. Or it's also okay to be wide, if that's mm -hmm. what you're at, as long as it's an authentic place. Yeah. But I think just having that understanding and intention of where you're at with right. wh whomever you're at. Because mm -hmm. it's also hard when you think you're, like, friends with someone, but they are just a colleague. Or yeah. they are just an acquaintance, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. that's, like, it's sad to learn that, okay, that's not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's just you my are colleague and will always stay there. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's it's okay. okay. It's okay. That's okay. One of our mottos. Did you learn anything? Oh, did I learn cover? anything? Uh, be okay with widening the net again. Mm -hmm. When that comes. Which, honestly, I'm not looking forward to. But it's fine. <laughs> but it's fine. But it's fine. I'll do it's it. Fine. It's fine. I will. I'll be fine. I actually really enjoy being uncomfortable in terms of pushing myself to the next level of anything. Yeah. Um, most things. And so I'm actually kind of excited for when that happens again. Yeah. I think my takeaways are be okay organizing something. Mm -hmm. um, just anything. Whatever it is. Set a date, time, a place. And see who shows up. If it's nobody, figure out maybe how to widen that network. Oh, I thought you were going to say, have an awesome self-pity party. <laughs> or that, too. Yeah. Make sure there's some ice cream in the freezer. Yeah, there you go. Make sure you get plenty <laughs> of pity party food, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, either way, it's okay. Someone will show up. Um, or not. Or not. Right. Usually, someone comes. Mm. I've had experiences where people Where nobody them. shows yeah. up. Yeah. I've had, like, always at least one person comes, mm, yeah. even if I, like, barely advertise it. Right, no. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so host something. Be cool. Understanding that people aren't your friends. They might be an acquaintance. They might be a colleague. Don't hold that against them. And be also understanding that maybe some of your friends are just kind of busy. And also, for those who don't want to drive the 45-minute drive, mm -hmm. maybe consider doing it. Yeah. Because you value that friendship. Yeah. I think that's a really good one. Sequoia's. Talking to all you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you specifically. All you. Listening to this right now. Drive Sometimes the 45 rage. minutes. That's fine. <laughs> Just internal rage happening right now. It's okay. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, thanks for joining in on the I Don't Know What the Fuck I'm Doing podcast. Check our link, beacons.ai slash IDK WTF POD. That goes to all of our things, including... A phone number for you to actually give us a phone call, Zoom call, whatever that thing is, because we actually haven't done it yet. Um, <laughs> we'll do that. A calendar link. Oh, okay, calendar link. Best, yeah. Clarity. A calendar link. Yeah. Where you can actually schedule a time to literally chat with us. We can brainstorm. We can just ask questions or just have a good time. You can apologize for not coming to our cabins. <laughs> It'd be nice to. There you go. For all of you who know. <laughs> You know who you are. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Like, share, comment, and share with friends. Ring that bell. Subscribe that button. Smash that button. Comment. And if you have stories, too, that you want to share with us. You know, um, yeah, that'd be great. Share it down below or just email us on our beacons.ai. Or we'll have a phone, talk, phone chat. Or call us. And maybe record it if you want. And we can put it in our Patreon account where people get behind-the-scenes content. Yeah. A shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you on the next podcast. Woo! Woo!